Forty years ago, people were starting to ask questions. You know, the the one question she asked, and a valid question,、um, why does my son have more opportunities to play sports than my daughter? A movement for equality started. Athletic director and the school realized that girls were. Very interested in sports. It wasn't that we weren't interested; it's that it wasn't there for us. Now, female sports are thriving, and many young women benefit from the battles fought by the previous generation. Paddle nine is very important to have,、um, and how it started sports and for women. And without that, I probably wouldn't be here going to the school I'm going to. So I think it's really important.、Um, and I mean. Just ice time too. Like the boys always used to get the better times than we did, but like now it's more even, and、um, it's been just very beneficial to our whole program and girls' sports and at our high school in general too. Many don't know the tales of discrimination that our mothers faced when they were growing up. We will explore the legacy and lasting impact of Title IX. There was a, a huge equity issue,、uh, particularly. When it came time for basketball and sharing the gym, I remember we we used to get out of school. I believe it was at 2:15, and we were a, the girls were able to have the gym from 2:15 to 3 o'clock, and and that、um, that was our practice initially. And、uh, but I have to say, give credit to my mother. She、uh, moved forward, went went to the school committee. Uh, first went to the athletic director, then the school committee to say, you know, the the one question she asked, and a valid question,、uh, why does my son have more opportunities to play sports than my daughter? You know, little did my mom know at the time that she was a,、um, you know, a leader in the women's liberation march, I guess. But、uh, you know, it just made sense, and it's a question that makes sense, and it makes sense now. Title IX makes sense because there were huge inequalities 40 years ago. Some schools didn't have sports for girls, while others didn't respect what they did. Joanne Lear of Cohasset experienced inequality at the Catholic high school she attended in New Jersey. However, she helped change that situation when she started talking to her athletic director. I started having a little conversation about him, saying girls get no respect. You'd understand. You have some really good athletes in the school, and there's no outlet for us. We have to go outside of school to get it. And he says, "What can you do? How can you show me your ability?" They said, "I will challenge your fastest football player in a sprint any day, and I'll tell you that a few of us girls could beat them." He's like, "Oh yeah, right. Okay." I said, "You're on right now if you're up for it." And he called a couple of his guys over. And we blew them out of the water. Absolutely,、um, one particular friend of mine and I just just left him in the dust, really. And he was just like, "Oh my gosh, wow, this is incredible!" And he said, "There has to be an outlet for you." We、um, ended up having a team. We practiced. We had to shadow the boys, whatever equipment they weren't using at the time, or area of the track they weren't using at the time. We got to use the minute the boys needed it or wanted it.、Um, we had to vacate that area, and you know, sometimes we were left to stretch because the boys were spread out.、Um, but we got all the girls, like almost too many girls, on the team, and then that's when the athletic director and the school realized that girls were very interested in sports. It wasn't that we weren't interested; it's that it wasn't there for us. I do remember in in one game in high school. This was an actual game.、Uh, the girls' varsity was playing, and the game the opposing team arrived late, and we were into we would. It was getting towards the end of the third quarter, and the athletic director came out and and said to the coach, "You need to end this game. The boys have to have practice." It was shocking. I mean, even then, you knew that didn't make sense. And and my coach, to her credit, refused to do that. Something like that develops an animosity as to wait a minute. What's why is that happening? Why、uh, why would, it would be unheard of? The boys would never end a pra,、uh, 
practice or a game early to, to accommodate the girls, so it shouldn't happen the other way. Because Joanne Lear's track team wasn't an official varsity sport, judges and race officials told them that they unofficially hold a state record, but their times didn't count. Early statistics weren't kept, making it difficult for area athletic directors from nominating early female athletes to their Hall of Fame. Cohasset High star basketball player Sammy Lear shares her feelings about the unrecognized achievements of female athletes before her. I, just, I don't even know like what to say. Like that's just it's being able to leave your mark on a place, and you can after all, everything you've done for that school. And I mean, just it's yourself working hard, but you don't have anybody to like look up to 30 years ago saying like thank you for putting your time and effort into it and allowing us to do this and play today and have a uniform and have a court time and everything because I'm sure they didn't have like set rules or set schedules for women to play in the gym whenever or have like the same amount of time so I wish we could like, go see those women and say thank you. The impact of Title IX is felt both on the field and off the field. Hingham High field hockey coach and history teacher Susan Petrie explains. Title IX opened doors for women so not only they could compete in sports, but it's in all extracurriculars too. And you saw you know, the results of that. I don't need to give a history lecture, but you know, more women getting involved in government, more women going to college, more women becoming um, heads of companies. Um, you know, 1991 was the year of the woman when so many women were being elected to um, Congress, and we just we keep seeing these benefits. And if you go back and talk to so many of those women, they got their starts by becoming leaders in extracurricular activities and athletics in high school. And that's why I think it's so important that we continue to push girls to um, achieve their goals and to take on leadership roles. In a tailored ball, you should do this. Oh my gosh, get it off! Okay, I'm here, I'm catching the ball, I'm flat fast, and I'm ready to go through. Do you see what the difference is? I'm facing it. Instead, you guys are like, she's totally got this. Okay, well, You do. Oh, that was the end of the ball. Sure. I'm ready. I'm ready for you, Anna, in case she needs backup support, okay? So we just have to be a little bit quicker about six. Always, it's not just the forwards. <laughs> we should always be facing the I think that the title line, I think, is equally important, if not, maybe even more important for the kids that, that aren't quite, you know, maybe the, 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 the big athletes that you hear about, but the other ones that, that they, because I've seen many girls come into the youth programs, and um, you're teaching them the sport for the first time, and they kind of come along and they finally get it. And boy, what a change. You can see such a transformation in, in their whole confidence level. Now they're a part of a team, they feel part of a team. You can just see them kind of go from coming to the field like this, like all hunched over, to, to stand up tall. They're so proud. You can just see the smiles on their faces. You can just kind of see them, you know, blossom. I mean, it, it really, I've really seen some great, great things happen because of these opportunities with the sports. And then they take that new conference and they go on, they apply to school. And um, it, it just it makes a, a tremendous change. I think even more so of a change for those, those athletes that are, you know, again, not the, not the top, but, but the other ones. It gives them some way to fit in. And all of a sudden, they've got a whole new group of friends. And um, it, it's, it's huge. It's huge, particularly, you know, again, back to the old days. I mean, the only groups that girls would have, you either didn't do much or maybe you were a cheerleader. But this that whole other group of girls that has that have no nowhere to go. But then now all of a sudden you bring athletics in or, or they can't be the cheerleaders because they're not maybe the prettier girls. So they got this whole most of the girls, all the other ninety percent have nothing to do. Well now you also you put the sports in. Now you get all these girls coming together, meeting new friends, getting new confidence and, and now they too can it it makes a tremendous difference on that. Oh, there's so many life lessons that you learn from playing a sport with uh, teamwork and backing each other up and the connections you make with one another and really like, being um, reliable and helping out the people who you're with all the time. Sports have been a major part of my life since I was a younger girl and without them I don't think I would be as confident and like responsible and reliable and it's like taught me leadership skills and 
commitment. You have to be committed to a team all the time because the team is the ultimate goal in the individual. I think kids look up to me not only because I'm a senior, but I like I always give it everything I have, and I've been told that by numerous people. And it's funny because we coach um, camps in the summer, and the little girls—it's so cute to see their little eyes light up when this, me and some other teammates walk in the gym. Because I remember back when I was in like fifth and sixth grade, I was the water girl for the high school team, and I used to be the same exact way. So I know exactly how they feel. Currently. There are field issues for the softball team at North Reading High. The professional leagues for women are slowly developing. Single-sex classrooms at public schools in Alabama and Idaho are being challenged by the ACLU. The need for Title IX is still there. A number of female athletes hope to continue the legacy of their parents and defend a program that has enriched their lives. I knew my mom had like done gymnastics and she was like she ran track and everything, but when I heard that she was the one who started this program, it was just like, okay, that's pretty awesome. What, what am I going to do now to follow up with that kind of? Um, I think the important thing is teaching every single woman, you know, how important it was and what the women before us did. And you don't want to forget the history. And, um, you know, those women are unfortunately forgotten right now, but if we can keep them in the minds, then it'll keep women working harder and not allowing us to go back at all and just keep step keep taking steps forward rather than going backwards and I think that's the the biggest part of Title IX right now is, is teaching the, the, the youth about how important it is in our lives as women.